up, everyone? Tyler Tambolin here, a.k.a. Totag and Tambo. Back for the week 14 version here. We're getting through this season of the Prize Picks and DraftKings show. Back finally with my man, JT Hayes. Excited to be back. Excited to be back on the show. Excited to be back with you, JT Hayes. What's happening, my man? How are you doing this week? Well, I'm excited to be with the king of the beach. I mean, <laughs> you can call yourself in this topsy-turvy world, 2020, 2021, you be what you want to be, Tambo, and coming in second for $150,000, you're my king of the beach. I don't care what anybody else says. Congratulations. It's good to be back with you. Bobby Gomes ably filled in for you once again last week, but man, it would have been nice to have your picks in that lineup in my own lineups on Sunday. How are you feeling? You got to be feeling great about that win and excited. Week 14, the season's moving along very, very quickly. We're almost at the end here. What are you looking forward to about this week and coming up? And how does it feel to be the king of the beach? Yeah, back back to even, I think, after 13 weeks, finally got it back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, I appreciate you. Yeah, I'm blushing a little when you call me the king. But I, I've been I've been told the queen, the prince, the bridesmaid of the beach. I like all of them because they all come with the same paycheck. So I'm certainly happy. Got another trophy right up here behind me. So uh, I, I came in third back in 2017. So this was nice to pick up a second. Very lucky the way it ran out. The Deontay Johnson play paid off at 13 percent. Gardner Minshew and JTAs, you could have had my plays. You are on run pure sports the core was up there the six of the nine plays were in that we're in that core we're in my lineup so uh, a crazy week overall it was awesome to get down there get away just enjoy a little bit of a vacation get away and then come home with some of the money and a little bit of the hardware so definitely feeling good appreciate bobby gomes for filling in appreciate everybody for reaching out on twitter at toe tag and tambo hit me up there all the support from everybody across the industry, all the you know community at Run Pure, just people I've worked with in the past. It definitely feels good when we put a lot of work in for this stuff daily and just get after it to finally have that big week. And the King of the Beach was just such a grind with the you know picking up the tickets. Took me till tournament 187 out of 250 to get a ticket, and then third got a second one that night. So on and so over. Got to get in the round 250 and beat top 75 get two through and it was just a grind all the way to the end so extremely pleased with the final result i appreciate you man yeah it's it's something of a heater you went on there right at the end you picked up the tickets carried that right into the tournament itself so congrats speaking of heaters speaking of grinds if you've been playing every single week it's now week 14 if you've been playing on prize picks by using code mmn to get your hundred dollar deposit match you've been playing the mayo media contest where you make five picks, you make your bet $7.11. Here at the end of the season, top prize, $3,500 in site credit to prize picks. And if you've been playing every week and you finish absolutely dead last, you get a little bonus as well. As you know, if you've been playing every week, you get your five picks right and you get a little bonus there as well. Today, I'm all myself going to give you two picks tonight as well or tomorrow if you're watching this on Friday. But you mentioned it, man. It has been a heater for Rump Your Sports, a heater for a bunch of guys. And with you coming in off that King of the Beach, so just excited for another week here. NBA season in full swing. RPS Heater 25, get 25% off of your first month's payment at Rump Pure Sports. And you and I, Tambo, will finally be back again on this Sunday off the Chalk Show oh, yeah. right at the crack of dawn. Definitely looking forward to that. I know it's early, but it's well worth it. It's one of my favorite shows I do all week. This is another one of them. I, I love being on here with you, JT Hayes, but let's hop right into this. We do have a big week ahead of us. Week 14, there's still plenty of action. You mentioned all the promos, everything going on with prize picks. Like you mentioned too, we give two picks each. So there's four of your five. Find your fifth favorite pick that you personally like or take three of our four, whatever you decide based on your feels. But I've got the two here. I'm going to start it off with you, though. What do you got for me this week and for the people for your two picks over at Prize Picks? Yeah, there's a lot of very interesting lines. Uh, the funniest line that I've ever seen on PrizePicks.com. Everybody knows about the New York Giants quarterback injury situation. Looks like it's going to be Jake Fromm. The line on him, 168 and a half, 169 and a half passing yards. I'm not touching that. Where I'm going to start first is with the Las Vegas Raiders in Kansas City. Saw, did a bit of research, saw a stat today about quarterback play in Kansas City, a little bit lower towards the end of the season. But big news for the Las Vegas Raiders, Kenyon Drake is out for the season, and Josh Jacobs is finally healthy. And I think the line here on him, 46 and a half rushing yards, Tambo, just too low. 
Jamonte Williams, outstanding rookie for the Denver Broncos. He went for 102 yards rushing against the Kansas City Chiefs last week. He also got very involved in the passing game, like I expect Josh Jacobs may do as well. Javante, six, I think, for 76 and a touchdown, but 46 and a half, I think that's way too low for the bell cow for the Raiders, who I think they're going to lean on. This Raiders team, don't sleep on them. They've actually been decent on the road. I think it's a three and two record winning in Pittsburgh, winning a tough game in Denver. So I like that over on him. And then the second one that I'm going to go to, maybe a little bit surprising for some people, the Detroit Lions, big, big win finally. Get that monkey off their back, the first win of the season against the Vikings. They now travel on the road, headed in to Denver. And listen, the Detroit Lions over the last four weeks have given up 150 fantasy points to wide receivers. And they weren't playing Tom Brady's Buccaneers or Matthew Stafford's Rams. Two of those games against the Chicago Bears and the Cleveland Browns, who would actually rather kick field goals and punt than throw the ball. So I'm going to go with Jerry Judy. I think he's taken his rightful spot now that he's back healthy as the number one wide receiver. Look, receivers have done well, and I think Bridgewater is actually an upgrade over some of the quarterbacks that, that they've played. So I'm going to take the over with Jerry Judy, 59 and a half receiving yards there. Josh Jacobs, Jerry Judy. I think those two lines are just too low. I like them quite a bit. Yeah, uh, the one I most certainly like. So this is the only thing we talk about this every week, but the prize picks are the only ones that we do see of each other because we send them into our producer. We get the graphics rolling everything. And you stole that definitely from me. You got the message in extremely early. I don't even know if I was up yet. I'm still recovering from this thing, but uh, I was like, what the heck? This guy got the pick already. That number just seems bad based on everything that's going on there. And like you said, as much as Kansas city could be up, I'm going to talk about some Kansas city guys later on when I get to my DraftKings segment. But I do think that uh, he makes the most sense. If you only want to take one of JT's, that's most certainly one. I would, I like both. But that's the one I would take. The other thing about the Jerry Judy pick is that I think, especially when we get talking running back later, looks like the Javante Williams, free Javante stuff, all that's coming true. And so it could be a really good leverage play over on DraftKings where most people will go there. Uh, just saw Madison run all over Detroit there last week. Uh, he was in my King of the Beach lineup, so I remember that quite well. He could have done a little bit more. They didn't give it to him at the goal line, though, for that last one. But I'll, I'll take it. It's just that it would have won me the whole thing. That's why it might still be at the top of my mind. But I like both of those plays. I've got a couple different. I'm definitely going back to hashtag team over with you. I love the overs. First one, though, this is the guy. I played him a few times this season. I think I've got him every time right. I've used him here in the prize pick segment. To all those one and ones, he was the one winner. And that's Joe Burrow, over 240 and a half passing yards here. Going against San Francisco, uh, saw a little bit of, but even Russell Wilson was pushing that number. And he normally doesn't even break 200. So uh, he does it in different ways. But I think that that was something that showed off. And that was even with Mixon running it like 19 or 20 times last week. So I think that's a, an awesome spot at 240 and a half. He doesn't have to do that much. Um, 300, he just threw in last game would have been even more. So he just threw for 300 himself, Joe Burrow, but it would have been even more if Jamar chase. Another thing I remember quite well, did not drop that 70 yard, what would have been a 70 yard touchdown. So uh, I definitely think Joe Burrow makes a lot of sense here at 240 and a half. And the other one's Tyler Lockett. So I'm going to explain this one going back and forth. They're going against Houston. It's a great spot. Uh, it's not going to be contradictory necessarily later. I'll explain it a little more after, but I do like his over 59 and a half here. I know everyone's still waiting for DK Metcalf week, wondering why a couple weeks ago he didn't even get any targets in the first half. And then he's sort of been back and forth and not doing as much. But if you think Wilson chooses to stick with Lockett here, uh, you can look at it in the last five games. He's gone over this number four times, 68, 96, 115 and 142 um, DK Metcalf has only hit 60 once. So if you like DK Metcalf, I think it's a bounce back week for him. I usually only like one or the other. His number is 54 and a half, but I'm going to take the guy that's broke the number and smashed the number for the last five weeks in Tyler Lockett with the over 59 and a half receiving yards. Any other thoughts on those two picks for me with Tyler Lockett and Joe Burrow besides Tyler Lockett has the best first name in football and you can't spell lock without Lockett. So we're good there. Yeah, Tyler Lockett, great name. My other favorite name, I discovered a player this week. It's not NFL, but it's NBA, JT Thor. I mean, think about that. JT Thor for the Charlotte Hornets. Didn't even know that he was a player, uh, but they're dealing with some COVID issues. He's been getting some minutes, but I love the Joe Burrow call. Joe Burrow all the way down now to 6K on DraftKings, 
want to stay on top of the news because he's been practicing in a limited fashion. He did hurt that finger last week in the game against the Chargers, but I just think that's way too cheap against the San Francisco team on the road. I love that call. And then all season long, last year it was kind of the opposite. It was Tyler Lockett week, only two weeks of the season. Every other week was DK Metcalf. This year, Russ, Tyler did some bonding in the offseason, and now it just seems every single week Tyler Lockett's getting seven, eight, ten targets while DK is kind of left out in the cold. So I like that a bit. I think actually another cheap stack there is that Seattle Seahawks stack. You get Russ to Lockett. I wouldn't include both of them, although you can because it is the Houston Texans after all. But that's only going to cost you about 20K. So I like that a lot as well. Yeah, that's a good point you brought up. It's a good segue. Guys, stick with us because we're going to get through all the plays. We're going to move on to DraftKings now, go through quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and, and defense even. So if you're just joining us for the first time, you want to stick through to the end because a lot of these things that we talk about are going to segue into this next spot here. And I'll start at quarterback because you just brought it up. You, you already just a perfect segue. That's why I love being back together with my main guy here, but we're going through it and I'm, I'm on Russell Wilson. I think it makes a lot of sense. That's why I said it won't necessarily, I don't want it to be contradictory, but my thought process is this, look, Lockett can have five for 60 and that could be his game this week. And Metcalf, because people are off of him, because people aren't really going with that narrative of, or they're going with the narrative of them not really being on the same page or aren't working well or gelling well together. That's Russell Wilson and DK Metcalf I'm talking about. I do think that you could go back there on DraftKings, and I'll talk more on that at wide receiver. But I do think that Russ just makes a lot of sense out of the gate, right? You, he's in the news to talk about his trade clause, going back and forth. But now you get a really good matchup with what we already know is a very condensed offense, target tree, et cetera, where you've got him, Metcalf, or Lockett. Like you said, I personally don't play them both together. The numbers just show at the price they're at to hit ceilings in large field tournaments especially. They really have never gone well or correlated together. Even when they have their, quote-unquote, both had good games, it's like 21 and 24, and you say, well, isn't that good enough? No, look at last week. You had guys at 35, 40. Like, it, you just have to put up a monster number, and they just eat away at each other. So I would prefer to pick one there. But another guy I like that you could stack with him may come up later in the tight end position, and that's Gerald Everett. I think he's a guy, if you look at the red zone targets, the way they're using him, uh, even with Will Disley there, I still think he's a guy you can keep on top of. And then the Burrow thing, I'm, I'm in on him again. I won't take him here, but I just want to bring up one more point you brought up. Yeah, it's Thursday night. We're looking at the news. That, you know, I saw today, even Mixon has a really bad cold, they called it. Like, we, we don't know what that situation is going to be there. But if he's in, it doesn't matter to me about the Mixon side. But if he's out, you can't play it, obviously. But if he's in and Mixon's out, I do think it gets even better. If Mixon's in, I still think Joe Burrow is just fine. Uh, the other guys, I, I should have talked about this off the top, JT, and I'll get your thoughts in a minute here. But this position this week, we've got Taysom. We've got Cam. We've got some cheaper options. We're coming off of Minshew Mania. The cheap quarterback worked. So I wonder if people are just going to go there. And I kind of like to dink when others others dunk or, or re reverse. I like to dunk when others dink. We'll call it that way. I like to slam it and get on these guys that I want. Some of these big names this week, Brady, Mahomes, Wilson, who I just mentioned, Burrow, Allen, Herbert. Those are sort of the guys I'm looking at. Brady and Mahomes was kind of the two that rose to the top. I think I'm definitely leaning a little bit more Mahomes, though. Uh, I know he had a little bit of a battle there with his OC last week, verbally, of course, and back and forth there. He's been struggling, but I do think this is a good get-right spot. I know it's a division matchup, but at the same time, uh, the Raiders can just get stomped. Uh, you, you mentioned Josh Jacobs earlier. I think you could use him on the other side. He's been getting pass game work as well, but you can stack it up. You know what it is with Mahomes. You've got options. Kelsey, I think, is pretty intriguing if you want to save some money and just single stack. Him, Kelsey, could have Kelsey be this week's Kittle maybe. And then you've got Jacobs on the other side. I think that can make a lot of sense. Justin Herbert is an interesting conversation only because they've got a lot of stuff going on there with COVID-19. Um, Allen, they've got defensive guys. Mike Williams currently in the protocol from close contact, but not officially ruled out yet. You got the cheap guys with Guyton and Palmer. And then you've got Cook, Parham at tight end. Now they do have a lot of guys. I personally don't love that from a target tree or stacking perspective, but I think you could just get after it instead of tiptoeing around it and maybe get all in. So that would sort of be a bonus play. Would definitely want to see what ownership looks like, though, going into the slate on Sunday. And as JT mentioned earlier, you guys can join both of us along with our man AP over at the Run Pure Sports YouTube channel where you can check us out at 8.45 Eastern time for the Off the Chalk show. Talk to me about the quarterback position, JT. Anything on my stuff there and then anything else you want to add in your two picks for this week? 
Yeah, Mahomes, this is a spot where he smashed against the Raiders the first meeting of the season. That, of course, in Las Vegas in the Dome later in the season, you do have to pay attention to the weather. But it seems like a good spot for Mahomes and his primary weapons, Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey, to get right there. The Justin Herbert thing is interesting because all things point to the Chargers just being able to absolutely smoke this New York Giants team. They now have, it's not even their second string. It's not even their third string. They've got a quarterback who wasn't on the roster two weeks ago, Jake Fromm, former University of Georgia Georgia star, going to make his first NFL start in his career in Los Angeles against the Chargers. If they don't look ahead to what's coming next week and take this opponent lightly, which you make a good point because of all of the issues, COVID protocols, guys that might miss it may actually focus them a lot more here. That's what worries me about a guy like Justin Herbert is the Chargers are a team that need to be pushed a bit to hit their ceilings. Now, if Keenan Allen is out, Mike Williams is in, he's going to slide into that Keenan Allen role. Jalen Waddell of the Dolphins, same type of slot receiver that Mike Williams would be this week, nine for 90. Nine receptions, 90 yards. Mike Williams just 6K on DraftKings. Easy play, maybe the easiest play on the slate. Don't know how I feel about the rest of the team there, but in terms of quarterback, I'll start with Burrow. I love Burrow. Burrow priced down, and I think his lowest price point of the season, if not real close to it, at just 6K on DraftKings. Receivers came down in price as well. Jamar Chase finally under 7K, 6'9". You mentioned the big drop. Big drops, kind of a flashback to the preseason when it was, oh, Jamar Chase isn't going to be anything because he can't hold on to the ball. Well, I think he'll be motivated to do that this week here against a San Francisco 49ers secondary that he should have a big advantage over. Then Tyler Boyd is just 5K. If you wanted to double stack those guys, even CJ Uzoma came down to 3K. So I like that quite a bit here against the Niners team playing their second game on the road after a disappointing loss in Seattle last week. I think you can go to Taysom Hill. Taysom in the same spot as Gardner Minshew was last week against one of the worst defenses in the NFL in the New York Jets. But Taysom does something that Gardner Minshew can't, and that's rush the ball. He got 100 yards rushing against the Dallas Cowboys. I think he could easily do that here against the New York Jets. And then if I'm looking to pay up, I'm probably going to go away from Mahomes because I think he's going to be popular. Tambo, I want your thoughts on this. I think this is a pretty intriguing, very low-owned spot for Josh Allen. Everyone's down on the Bills. Everyone is down from watching that game last week where the Patriots beat them with, I think it was 30 some rushing plays. They only threw three passes. Of course, a terrible game plan by the Buffalo Bills. So let's just be honest. They should have come with the same rushing heavy game plan because that's how you beat the Patriots anyway. Instead, they were trying to throw downfield to Stephon Diggs in these 30 mile per hour wins. Didn't use Cole Beasley at all over the middle. I think it's a good bounce back spot here and potentially, potentially a letdown spot where you have a talented defense and might I add a very pissed off Buffalo Bills defense. And that's where Tom Brady has struggled. When you've got athletic playmakers in the secondary, they can pick off his balls. What do you think about that? Yeah, I do like that. Actually, we talked a little bit about it before the show. And I just think it's uh, I, I said for one of the bets of the week, I think it could be one of the best bets get the spread and then take a little money line as a bonus. I just think it's a spot where the public is going to obviously love Brady still love the box, love everything they're doing, just shining. And I think that it's a good spot that they could bounce back. You mentioned Beasley who I'm most certainly going to mention shortly as well. You talked about that over the middle game. I think that makes a ton of sense. And, and Allen's another guy. It's funny. You look at his numbers, a DraftKings point scoring 29, then 12, 25, then 18, 28, almost 29, then 12. What, maybe it's a good bounce back spot to get almost 30 here again. And like you said, it's pretty easy to stack it up. It makes some sense. And if people are going to play that Brady side or chase the Godwin after, what was it, 17 targets last week, I think he had. Uh, you know, Evans wasn't that far behind, double digits, still not quite 17 or near that, but he still had a good a good amount of targets there last week. So, uh, like you said, a lot of stuff going on with them in the news and the Antonio Brown stuff and everything. But I do think that it's a good spot for you know that you bring it up. But the other guy I was going to bring up, we normally don't spend this much time on quarterback, but I think it's, again, all these big options this week was um, Dak against Washington. I'm um, just sort of looking at that, and he's sort of been back and forth as well, but down to 6,700, it's a little bit more intriguing at that price. Again, just 
some bonuses to mention for you guys, some things to think about. But let's move on. Let's go to running back. If you got anything else to add, by all means, JT, chuck it in. But uh, I know you like Jacobs up there in prize picks when we talked about it. Are you on him on DraftKings? And then who else do you like for this week? Definitely on him in on DraftKings. You know, you mentioned just talking about how guys and their production, right? Heavy one week, a little bit lower the, 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 the next week. It's one of my favorite things in DFS. If you're looking for consistency, you've got the wrong hobby. You've got the wrong livelihood because guys don't do the same thing game to game, week to week. Back to running back. Looks like Alvin Kamara might be back. This is a perfect spot here. I know that people are concerned. They say, well, Taysom takes away a little bit from Alvin Kamara, but man, this Jets defense is just absolutely terrible against the run. Kamara is, I believe, the highest price running back on this slate here at 7.9K. Andre DraftKings might be the second highest priced guy there, but I like Kamara here in this matchup. If he's back healthy with no limitations, I think he makes a lot of a sense. I already talked about Josh Jacobs, and then the other guy I'll give is Leonard Fournette. Like you said, I think a lot of people are going to be right back to the Tom Brady passing attack, saying, oh, my goodness, you got 15 catches, receptions for Godwin. Uh, Mike Evans got 99 uh, receiving yards last week. Gronk got the two touchdowns. But remember what they did against Indianapolis. They took what the defense could give them. And the Buffalo Bills, as good as they've been against the pass, They've been one of the worst defenses against the rush over the course of the last six weeks. It's not just guys like Jonathan Taylor. Last week, it was the three-headed monster of Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, and even Bolden, who got to them. So I think Leonard Fournette is in an interesting spot here at 7.4. Yeah, the, it's Eckler is 8.3, so Kamara's right behind him. But I think the more intriguing piece there is – uh, again, this is why you want to stick with us, why you want to be with us on the Sunday morning show. As of right now, the ownership just shows so high on Taysom that, you, you know, are people really going to stack him and and Camara, where most people would look to separate them or say one is going to eat into the other. So the interesting conversation on Sunday, I think will be once we get final ownerships around, do you stack those two together? and save some money on Taysom, pay up at running back, but then have money to spend elsewhere? Or do you take Kamara? Maybe he doesn't come in at the ownership, we think, and he ends up being a better leverage play. We'll have to wait and see if everyone's on Taysom and being afraid of going to Kamara. So I like that. We can most certainly speed up the running back position, though, because I talked about it earlier. We did spend more time on quarterback, and you and I don't talk about our picks. And we were very aligned this week. I'd already had the Kamara conversation ready for grabs, and you brought it up. So we're good there. I'm with you on Jacobs, definitely. A couple of the other guys, though, I brought up, you know, these maybe I'll get your thoughts on so we can talk just a little bit more. Uh, you mentioned earlier uh, in your prize picks, Jerry Judy. I was sort of thinking of, of another Bronco here, Javante. Maybe the, you know, hashtag free Javante is the, the official word now, right? You've got Saquon Barkley at 6,000 with a quarterback with Fromm there, possibly where you're likely just to see them hand the ball off. Barkley has looked bad, but the price tag accounts for it at $6,000. So I think that's something to think of. And then a couple others, um, Antonio Gibson, maybe. I, I you know he's been pretty good. Uh, I looked at the numbers there going back. McKissick's back, I believe. But if you don't know, look back, even in the games McKissick was there, 20 DK points in three of his last four games for Antonio Gibson. Uh, played pretty well there last week, the bell cow. They just kept putting it to him, passing it to him. Everything that you've got going on there seems to make some sense. So uh, I like the Fordette call. Any other thoughts on some of those guys that I mentioned there? Anything else stand out to you at the running back position this week? Javante looked absolutely outstanding. You kind of wonder what took the Broncos so long to get the ball in his hands. But we don't know if Melvin Gordon is going to be back. I don't think he's been ruled out of Sunday's game just yet. And I have concerns. If he's back, I'd like to see at least what the coach says about what that split is going to be. Are they going to go right back? They shouldn't. But, you know, you can't assume the rational coaching here. So I like it a lot more. If Melvin Gordon is out, you talk about Saquon. My biggest concern here with Saquon is if I were the Chargers and the Chargers head coach shown a bit of a penchant for game planning, done a pretty good job for the most part this season, and you're facing Jake Fromm, who's been out of the league, on practice squads, hasn't made an NFL start, wasn't really all that impressive in college, I'm stacking the box. I'm stacking the box and saying, go ahead, throw the ball on me, do your worst. 
And that's my biggest concern. I know the price point, very tempting. It'd be very tempting if they had Daniel Jones and all the weapons that they should have, that they have on their roster healthy, then it'd be a much different game. But if it turns out that Jake Fromm is starting and you've just got Saquon, I don't know. It, it, I think if you're doing that, then you're playing a script where the Chargers are looking ahead and they're going to get blindsided. But there's really nothing about the New York Giants that they've done this season that shows that they're capable of doing that. Yeah, it's definitely a risky play. I just think a couple things. One, uh, you kind of sold me on the fact that there definitely could be a spot here where the Chargers are looking ahead. So you don't necessarily have to play Barkley in Herbert lineups and say, well, if he's doing the work on that side, Herbert's going to crush coming back the other way. That's the way you could go about it because you mentioned earlier, I think it was pre-show and I loved it last week when we had Burrow versus Herbert last week. I wanted to play Herbert because I thought, you know, the Burrow situation, he wants to put a nail in that coffin to say, look, I know you were on pace to be the rookie of the year. You got injured. I won rookie of the year. That's done. But let me prove to you why I was going to win it anyway and then go out and play. So uh, that got him going for sure. And you kind of need that. And think with Barkley doing his thing here, but it could just be a situation where they're just, you know, you don't use him and you just use Barkley. Definitely a large field play for that. So let's move on though. Let's go to wide receiver because you brought up something earlier and I'm definitely going there, but you brought up JT Thor and a name you never heard of. And the running joke that we've had at run pure sports <laughs> is some guy named Amon Ra St. Brown, two things. One, he absolutely smashed last week. He had the game of his life went off. The second thing is that because of that, he got an interview and they found out, or I found out, they told the world, that he actually speaks multiple languages. He's very good with names, pronunciations, extra languages, all these things that you say you're the expert at. So come to find out full circle, the irony that you and Amon Ross St. Brown have so much in common. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, first of all, let me be clear. I love Amon Ross St. Brown. I've actually rostered him a bunch of weeks. The funny thing that week was, I think our guy, our buddy, one of the one of the top fantasy players, DFS players, he wanted to play Jared Goff, and I forget the matchup, but it wasn't a very good one for Jared Goff. And my count was, I don't want to play some guy named Amon Ross St. Brown, right? Yeah. Because he's a rookie, because it's his first season. He actually he smashed. He was in, I think, the Millie Maker winning lineup, got 24 DK points. And I played him a couple of weeks hoping for that, hoping that he is – should be the number one wide receiver on the Detroit Lions. The problem has been Jared Goff hasn't been able to get him the ball. Well, our guy, AP, he doesn't quit. He doesn't let up. He went right back to Jared Goff and Amon Ross St. Brown in that matchup against the Vikings. He did pretty well last Sunday because he stuck, stuck with that combo and said one of these weeks, it's going to pay off. So good for Amon Ross St. Brown. Seems like a great young man. And hopefully, hopefully for the sake of, of the Detroit Lions, he's also going to be a pretty damn good long-term NFL wide receiver. Yeah, he looked good. You and I have joked about him a few times, like you said, and it was the Vikings. We're watching here. It's Thursday night recording. Uh, Big Ben is not finding the same success, uh, nor is it pretty much anyone for the Steelers as we speak right now, at least, but in the first half. But yeah, it was just funny. I thought I would bring that up. Uh, I'll start a wide receiver for draft gigs this week. Got a, a couple spots. So I mentioned earlier with Cole Beasley. I do like that. Uh, you could use it as a secondary stack with Leonard Fournette, who you brought up. You could use him in the stack with Josh Allen, pair him up, do a double stack, whatever you want to do there. I just think, like I said, that's the way that you beat the box, sort of that over the middle dink and dunk, be able to find your way and zip through it. And I think that we could find Cole Beasley in a pretty good spot. He's cheap, 5,000 bucks. It's a fair price. It's the mid tier. It fits sort of what I've been doing all season, JT, and building these more balanced builds where you can just sort of space it out a little bit, find it, you know, obviously you can get a tight end, a little cheaper, a defense, something like that, but then you can still make it work without having to try and find these complete diamond in the rough or gem plays that everyone thinks are going to mean just because you hit one of those, you're set for the week. Look, there's probably some guys that played a Monroe St. Brown last week that didn't have it in the right lineup or the right stack or whatever it might be. And that, that performance goes to waste here. Guy like Cole Beasley is pretty fair in pretty much any lineup. The other guy, I like, like I said, this is for DraftKings. I definitely think Metcalf will be lower owned than what we've seen. And this is why I was saying I didn't want to be contradictory earlier. You can have, that's the beauty of prize picks. You can get that five for 60 game where we win the prize pick bet with T Tyler Lockett. DK Metcalf, though I said earlier, you can't spell lock without Lockett. 
you, you can't spell DraftKings or the acronym without DK Metcalf. DK is DK, so use them on DK. I think this is a good spot. I think it's a, a spot it could bounce back when most aren't going to want to go there. I'm going to take the risk because, you know, when he does have, you mentioned earlier, his big games like last year, it's usually for two touchdowns. Uh, it's usually for a big yardage game or, you know, a bunch of catches, a bunch of yards and a touchdown, whatever it might be, it can all add up. So I certainly like going to DK Metcalf. And then the bonus I had was kind of fitting with what you mentioned earlier, leaning off it a little bit just in talking through it. But I just thought if you are going to go after this Chargers game and you want to mix it in with some of these riskier plays like Barkley, who I mentioned earlier, and go the Herbert route, you can definitely use the Palmers, the Guitons, the Cooks. You just are going to have to play enough of it that you can get some mix and match versus just trying the one lineup where I'm just going to hope that it's Palmer instead of Guyton or vice versa, whatever it might be. So that's some of the guys I like. I like your Judy call earlier, but what else you got here at the wide receiver position this week? Yeah, I like Jerry Judy. I already talked about him. I like the Cole Beasley call. Nobody's going to be rostering him this week. I mean, people were talking about, oh, he might be, you know, out of the offense. He's not out of the offense. It's been a couple of difficult matchups. They had the Indianapolis Colts tough matchup of course for the bills that week it proved and then last week where you just couldn't throw the ball at all now i think the better came bland would have been to try and go over the middle to cole beasley along with a balanced rushing attack but that didn't happen so it's not that he's out of the offense but the bucks have been soft against the passing game and the buffalo bills have one of the best passing games in the nfl so i like that in addition, I talked a little bit about Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase has the slate breaking upside and now priced under 7K. I like a Joe Burrow double stack with one of those guys being Jamar Chase. Everyone is going to be playing T. Higgins once again. I don't hate T. Higgins, but I think that Jamar Chase is going to break out of this little slump one way or the other one of these weeks. And I'm willing to take a chance that it's going to be this week with his price point under 7K. And then the third guy I'll mention, another guy with slate breaking upside, didn't come through last week. Last week, I thought he would get a pretty big bump, being that the Redskins were going to be playing the Las Vegas Raiders. They're going to be without J.D. McKissick. And you brought up Antonio Gibson. It was Antonio Gibson who got a significant bump. But now, Terry McLaurin, just at 7K, he's going to face the coverage of Travion Diggs. Diggs likes to intercept the ball, which means he likes to jump routes. The other thing about Diggs is he gives up either the most or the second most passing yards per reception so far in the NFL this season. Taylor Heineke targets Terry McLaurin a little bit more, and he gets to jump one of those routes. When Diggs gets a little bit overaggressive, could have that slate breaking upside in that game. Yeah, I brought up Dak earlier, and that's something you could look at too. The other side, one of the, you know, we talked earlier about some of the cheaper quarterbacks. Uh, it would definitely, Taylor Heineke would definitely fit that spot. And last week, I know a lot of people liked him. And one of the guys I was with at King of the Beach said, No, look, I'm a huge Raiders fan. He's like, People are going to do it all wrong. They're going to play him. They're like, Just play Gibson or play nothing because he's like, He's going to be checking it down all day. Max Crosby back all the situation. Now Heineke gets a better spot. Dallas has digs, but beyond that, it's not too much. Like you said, and if McLaurin can break that, you could have yourself a pretty good day. I'm not sure uh, really about the run backs on the Dallas side this week or where we would go there. If you want I mean, I think you'd run it back obviously with Taylor Heineke and F1 with Terry, with scary Terry McLaurin there. But I do think that's a really good call. I like that one. Uh, I also think one thing I didn't, you know, sort of the elephant in the room this week, it's different than last week. Last week, there was like a hundred running backs you could play, or at least it felt like that. This week, we went you know, pretty tough to go through them. There was five or six we liked, but not nearly as many. So I definitely think you could use a wide receiver or another tight end in the flex this week over on DraftKings. So I think that's a good segue. Uh, let's move on, though. Let's go to the tight end position and tell the people what you're doing this week, JT. What do you got there? There's a lot of options this week. You've got Travis Kelsey up top at 7-4 in a matchup that he's done great against almost every single time he's played against the Raiders, whether they were in Las Vegas or they've been in Oakland. He just smashes this spot, but he's 7-4. George Kittle kind of broke the slate last week on the larger prize pool contest. He's all the way up to just under 7K now, 6.9. And still a good matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals, but I like Mark Andrews at 5-9 against the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns defense has been really good, but Marquise Brown really has not been 
and Lamar Jackson really has not been. And, and Mark Andrews kind of Lamar Jackson's security blanket over the middle there where the Cleveland Browns will give up a ton of yardage. So I like him a, a bit this week if you're going to pay up. But I think one of my favorite guys, if not my favorite guy at tight end, you mentioned him already, Gerald Everett for the Seahawks over the last six weeks of the season. The Texans giving up the most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. And Gerald Everett, 15 targets in the last two games as Russ and the Seattle offense trying to get back on track, which they did against the Niners. Now they go to Houston, a very, very soft matchup. And Gerald Everett is just 3.5 on DraftKings. Fits that build where you want to go with maybe a Kamara and one or two of those mid to higher priced wide receivers as well. Yeah, I like that call. Actually, the uh, Everett one, especially, like you said, I, I was mentioning it earlier with Wilson already. And, you know, just the fact, like you said, the stat on top of it, how bad they are against tight ends, the target tree, how condensed it is. And this is the thing about stacking. We don't talk about enough strategy on the show, probably, but you just think in general, we talk about some, uh, you know, we mentioned earlier with the Lockett and Metcalf thing. They typically, it's like 99% of the time, they don't go off together. That are, But the target tree is still thin. It's Russ. It's, you know, it's Lockett, Metcalf, Everett. Uh, Disley's there, but like I said, I like I like Everett quite a bit more. So you really have such a limited target tree. And when you already tell the rules in your optimizer or even when you're hand building or whatever it might be to not play Lockett and Metcalf together, it just makes it that much easier. It's Russ, Metcalf, Everett, and you don't even have to run it back. It's Houston, Te- Houston Texans. I think there's definitely a chance Seattle could just come out and have a game against them if you wanted to. There is some options over there, but I'm just saying in general, that's why I like stacking it up on this side. For me, you mentioned Kelsey. I just think it could be a potential spot here where uh, he's not the best by pricing like Kittle. Kittle still stayed just under 7000 You can still get him. For 6,900, I think that's fair. I prefer, like you said, Andrews for a thousand bucks cheaper, if that's the case. But Kelsey up top could be in that slate breaking slot or spot, I should say, again, like Kittle was last week. We saw it just continuously peppered him, went off. It is the division matchup. Last time out was eight for 119. Even, and this is a division matchup that's been going on now. They know who Kelsey is. It's the problem is they can't stop him. And Mahomes wants to get things back on track. Talked earlier about using him this week, the verbal back and forth between him and his OC maybe there's a spot where he just says look I'm going to go back to my bread and butter and we've been talking about Dinkin and Duncan a lot that's kind of what Kelsey can do 25 here and 30 there and 25 there and you're going back and forth until a couple of those end up in the end zone and it's even that much more so I do think this is a good spot to go back to him here and then one guy I was looking at is the opposite side of that game where you talked about Andrews and we mentioned him uh, if Njoku, I know he's got a Q tag right now, sort of a COVID-19 potential um, contact or whatever it might be there. Baltimore D went down again, another injury, and they've already been getting crushed by tight ends. So I think this could be a spot for Austin Hooper. Uh, I think it's an interesting one, at least to say, you know, to say the least, where you could use him here for a little bit cheaper. And, you know, again, it still keeps a pretty balanced build. He's not free or stone minimum, but he's cheap enough to where you could still build your lineup out, maybe upgrade a, a play at a different spot this week. So any other thoughts there at the tight end? If not, you can take us right into defensive or special teams. Yeah, good point about Hooper. He might be the last man standing in terms of tight end room for the Cleveland Browns and then Kelsey, the Raiders. Same thing I talked about over the last six weeks of the season, Texans giving up the most fantasy points to opposing tight ends, Raiders giving up the third most fantasy points to opposing tight ends, which includes one of those games against Travis Kelsey. In terms of defense, I haven't made up my mind yet here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through three and the reasons why I like them. And I'll start with a defense that I don't know if I'm going to play because generally, as we know, the higher price defenses haven't worked out all that well. Well, one of the higher price defenses this week, Los Angeles Chargers, 4.3. We've already talked about this matchup quite a bit. We know that they're likely going to be facing Jake Rom making his first NFL start. We know that this Giants offense has been pretty bad, particularly on the road. So the question is, will the Chargers show up? Will the Chargers not look past this game? And is this a spot to play their defense at 4-3? They looked pretty good in the beginning of that game last week against the Bengals. Not so good towards the end of that game. Now they will be at home. So that's one option. The other option is the Tennessee Titans. They're at 3.7. They're taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence hasn't made any leaps forward this season. Looked like maybe he was going to turn the corner after the third or fourth game of the season. Complete regression. 
Also, you've got Urban Meyer, not sure who's getting the receptions, not sure who's getting the looks, the targets. Listen, James Robinson fumbled against the Falcons a couple of games ago. He didn't play the next two uh, rotations, the next two times down the field where the Jaguars had the ball. He was completely off the field. Don't know why you're doing that and bringing Carlos Hyde in. It's not like you're trying to develop Carlos Hyde for the future. So I'm totally off the Jaguars here. I think the Titans could be in play. And then even though I like Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson has looked really, really rough over the course of the last few weeks. The more that he's thrown the ball, the more that the Ravens have tried to get him to throw the ball downfield, met with some good results early on, not so much more recently. And the Browns have had a pretty good defense. They've stopped some pretty good offenses. They're sitting at just 2.7K on DraftKings. Yeah, I think the Chargers one now, like the way we've just talked through the show, pre-show, and then leading through it, can make a lot of sense. I don't think anyone will go there. So I think that's a, a definite good call you could have there. Uh, a couple that I thought of just were sort of uh, rotating on those cheap two quarterbacks we mentioned off the top with Taysom and with Car- and with Carolina and uh, Cam Newton. I think one interesting one would be Carolina. So they're 2800 bucks. You could put, I don't think a lot of people do this, but you could have Cam with the Carolina defense. It is going against your Atlanta uh, Falcons, where we talk about all the time, we didn't bring up any Falcons on this show. I guess Kyle Pitts could finally have a week, if anybody, now that he gets away last week uh, with just a shutdown spot. But I just think here, you know, we haven't talked about, but Carolina could be in a good spot. You could also stack it up and treat Cam Newton like the running back with no CMC and just say it's like a running back DST correlation and then fill up all the spots in the middle and don't stack him with a receiver. Uh, the other way that, that I could, could go about, I think, is just go a little bit cheaper and it's against the other guy. I know you like Taysom and I like Camara. But if you were going against it, that's why we talk about this. It's not your entire portfolio when you're using, uh, you know, large field tournaments, you're playing multi-entry. I think you definitely want to get some shares to get against that. You just double down. I wasn't really in love with Taysom. Like I said, I like the Camara spot much better, hoping that Taysom gets a bunch of ownership, can play Camara, can play the Jets uh, in opposite lineups and just be able to get against that spot and gain some leverage across these large fields. So uh, pretty cheap. If you're going in on that fade, if you will, then why not double down? and get the Jets defense. Not like they're good, but they're cheap for 2,500 bucks. So uh, not much else for me there. I like that Chargers D call though. Like you said, Joey Bosa, I believe back as well. He had a concussion last week. I think he was ready to go in game. And they said, now nah, we're going to hold you back. Even though you're cleared, we're going to keep you out of this one, but that's just, you know, extra health, a little bit of a rest to come into this next game. Didn't get quite as beat up besides the, you know, the concussion protocol, but I guess coming back from that, he could be just fine. Anything else, that you want to add for this week, JT Hayes. If not, you can let people know where to find you. And then we'll be back here again for next week together. Yeah, at JT Hayes Jr. on Twitter and at Run Pure Sports. And Sunday morning with Tambo and AP, our Off the Chalk show goes off, if you will, at 8.45 a.m. So just as the sun's coming up, grab breakfast, hang out with us, and start thinking about the slate. Yeah. I love that show. Like I said, I always say uh, the tagline off the chalk where we don't just talk the talk, but we walk the walk because we've played, we put the money in play. That's exactly who we're playing for the week. You guys can see our stuff. We post about it, talk about it, put it in play, and then hopefully go and win with it, right? That's the ultimate goal. And for you guys to go and win with it as well. So appreciate you guys. Happy to be back here for sure. It should be at least not too many more interruptions, if any, for the rest of the season, I hope. But uh, always appreciate you guys sticking with us here. Again, on the Mayo Media Network, hit the subscribe button, big right button down in the corner, hit the like button for the show. Any comments of things you want to see in the future, go over to Run Pure Sports thereafter. That's where you can find both JT Hayes and myself. All of my football content is there, as well as when PGA kicks off again in the regular season in January, be right back doing everything there. And then here again on the Mayo Media Network, as always, with my boy Kenny Kim for the Fantasy Golf Degenerates podcast. You can find me on Twitter at Toe Tag and Tambo, usually posting out things there regarding the slate or regarding things that I've got going on personally. Just follow along the life of me playing DFS, doing things over at Run Pure Sports. But happy to be back. Appreciate you guys. Other than that, thank you and good luck. 